Good morning and happy Vlogmas. We're back. It's December. I'm so excited to get started. So uh, it, today is December 1st and it's a Sunday and it's the weird uh, calendar coincidence of being Thanksgiving weekend still. So it feels like Vlogmas is too soon, but really Thanksgiving was too late. <laughs> if you're new here, I'm Bailey. I live in upstate New York with my husband and our four pets. And I love Christmas. I'm so excited. I've got all these little crafty holiday activities planned for the rest of the month. And I've got lots of visits with family and friends. And I have a couple work trips. So it's going to be a really hectic month. But at least we get to kick it off with a nice lazy Sunday at home. I think I just want to start off by recapping some of the projects that I actually made over the last couple of days. And I no longer have them, but I had to send them on their way. So I took a little footage of them before I did. I had a couple holiday knits um, that I made for my, my nephew and my brother-in-law. I made them Christmas stockings. And uh, I had a visit with my mom yesterday. And uh, that's the last time I'm going to see her before actual Christmas. So I wanted to send those Christmas stockings with her because I think she's going to see my sister's family before Christmas. And I wanted to make sure that they have them as soon as possible. And also, uh, I had a birthday gift, a couple birthday gifts for my mom that I made that I sent on her with her yesterday. So uh, I wanted to talk about those because I, don't, I didn't, never got to show most of them on the podcast. I showed the stockings when they were partially completed, but I never got to show the things I made for my mom at all because I made them entirely after I filmed my last podcast episode, but they're already um, off at my mom's house, wrapped up, ready for her to open. Her birthday isn't for a couple weeks, but I, I wasn't going to see her again. So I just wanted to mention those because I'm not going to get another chance to talk about them. And honestly, by the time I do another podcast in January, I'll probably have forgotten. So um, mom, go away. I, first of all, I just made her a regular birthday gift to open on her birthday, and it was kind of last minute, but I started thinking that the other stuff I had for her not being, I had gift doubt, <laughs> and I thought maybe that's not going to be enough, so I made a scarf for her, and I also have been knitting so much and have had so many small knitting projects going at the same time for the last like two months now that i really wanted to crochet something a couple days ago I just had the absolute urge to crochet something simple and uh, I kind of peeked around on the Ravelry search function and I found this really pretty simple granny stitch scarf and then I just went did a little stash diving and I tried to choose something that would work with it so it's written for the sort of like self-striping cake yarns I think it's written for like Karen cakes and I do have one of those but I didn't like the colors for this project but I had another one a cake yarn from Lion Brand the mandala cake that I thought the colors were perfect that my mom would like them but uh, the pattern calls for two cakes and I only had one so what I did was just start the pattern which is essentially a mile a minute granny stitch scarf so I've, I've never done the mile a minute blankets before, but I'm familiar with the concept where you kind of make one long skinny strip and crochet, and then you just go around the edges until it's wide enough. Um, and I think the mile a minute afghans are usually made in long strips and seamed together. But in this case, I was just making scarves. So I was just making the one strip. So it was, it was a great use of a color changing cake yarn. Um, and the mandala one that I used, they were not, all harsh color changes. They were mostly pretty ombre, uh, smooth color changes. So that was kind of cool. There was a couple hiccups in that skein where there was like the wrong color for a very short amount of time that I think 
feel like they spilled dye or something. I don't know how that worked, but it, I don't think it was noticeable overall once the scarf was done. So basically, I just went until I ran out or nearly ran out of that cake. And then I went back up to my stash and tried to find a couple yarns that would coordinate with it. And I knew because it was acrylic and because it was like this very light DK, I was probably just going to use this, the leftover style craft special DK that I had from that failed temperature blanket in 2021. I have a whole bunch of colors of that. And uh, I wasn't sure if I had enough colors that would coordinate, but I did end up finding four that I thought looked really good with the colors that were already in the scarf. So I think it worked out really well. I just kind of kept going. This was my project over the entire Thanksgiving holiday. I kind of started it the night before and worked on it through the Friday. In the end, when I went back and checked the pattern, because it's such a simple process, I like didn't read the pattern after <laughs> the first night. Uh, I realized I had done a bunch of extra rounds, but I, I think I liked the size it came out. And if, even if I had read the pattern, I probably would have done the extra rounds. I wanted it to be that big. So I think I ended up doing like 14 rounds and the pattern says to do 10 or something like that. But I, I just alternated between the four colors of style craft that I found in my stash afterwards to kind of simulate the color changing yarn. And I think it came out really cute. And I did steam block it uh, because it was kind of scrunched up in some spots and it opened up nicely. And then I gift wrapped it and sent it off. So it's awaiting at my mom's house to be opened on her birthday now. And the other thing I made her for her birthday was this sort of uh, kitschy advent calendar that has a goofy theme, but one of the things I made for the last day of the advent, so she won't even open it until Christmas, is a couple mini sweaters. I went into my scraps and I found some like fingering weight scraps and I made these adorable, I think it's called mini crop puff. Um, they, they're so teeny little sweaters they take a couple hours to make they're like deceptively um time consuming for such a small thing but they're so cute they're literally just tiny raglan sweaters and i left a few rounds off of the raglan increases because i wanted my sweaters to be smaller so i did follow the pattern entirely except for leaving off a few raglan increases because i didn't want them to be quite so big i found this gorgeous little scrap of koigu Painter's Premium, I can never remember the name of this yarn. It's got like 10 words in it. But it's this beautiful variegated, like rainbow prismatic. And it looked so good on the scale of that teeny tiny sweater. And I just had so much fun making it. And I loved it. And I have more of that scrap left. And I honestly might make one of those tiny sweaters for myself. Just because I think it's so cute. But not yet. Because it was a little time consuming. And I do have other things to work on. That said... I am uncharacteristically pretty far along on my Christmas knitting and I'm really not going to be rushed this year. I've got a couple larger knits that are more than three quarters of the way done that I'm going to gift people. And then I just have a few small things that I want to make. I know I want to make a couple of things for my little nephew, but he's six months old. So like whatever I decide to make is only going to take a day or two. I think I got a really good head start and I really made a manageable plan for my knits this year and I'm not making like six sweaters. So yeah, I, I got quite far ahead. I'm, I'm doing okay. And uh, to the point where last night I decided to cast on a selfish make. I was just having a moment and I wanted something different. And the only big project I have that's not one of my handful of Christmas knits right now is my cavo jumper and it's i'm on a sleeve island and they're all over cabled sleeves and i'm just not always in the mood for that <laughs> amount of attention so last night i finally cast on my um, fungus cardigan oneck version so i found this cone of yarn at a thrift store earlier this year and I think we determined that it's uh, from Valley Yarns. It's Barrington something. It's like a wool mohair nylon blend. It's super fluffy. It's got an enormous halo on it. Very mohairy, a little bit scratchy. But I started last night and I've just got the start of my little cardigan here. And I'm very much enjoying it. So today I'll probably have my nice relaxing 
Sunday, knitting on that and just enjoying the Christmas vibes before we have to launch into a super busy month. I will have Advent to open later in the month. I didn't buy a yarn Advent this year, purely for budgetary reasons, because they are pretty pricey. But I do know my mom made me a 12-day Advent that I'll start opening on my birthday in a couple weeks. And uh, my mom purchased me a 25-day Advent, but it didn't come in time, so she, she has to ship it to me. So it won't get here till later this week. Uh, so we'll, we'll catch up later this week, but that one's a nail polish one. I think it's the one from Olive in June, which I've never used Olive in June before, but uh, I love nail polish. <laughs> and I'll, I'll have fun experimenting with the different nail colors and things throughout the month, because I think it's all like holiday themed. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing those later. For now, just Lazy Sunday. All right, I've had such a nice, comfy, cozy day. I have spent the entire day basically watching TV and hanging out with my husband and eating Thanksgiving leftovers and working on my fungus cardigan. Uh, I'm super loving how this is turning out. Like I, I had the idea for this and I, I believed it would be good, but I really love how the texture looks. I kind of wasn't sure if this very fuzzy yarn because i don't know how well you can it's got a huge halo do you see this it's wild it's a very fine yarn probably functionally like the core of it is a sport or dk but the halo is huge it's so nice so it's working out beautifully it's kind of see-through if i put it in front of the lamp you can see it's really a rather open weave but the halo is so fluffy that it's going to be so warm and nice and I really, really love the fabric that's coming up. And the stitch definition is really good. I was quite afraid that it wouldn't be so visible with all the fluff, but it really is. And I, I love it so far. Uh, and it was a lot of short rows. I spent all morning working on short rows, but you can see I've kind of got a few rows in since then. <laughs> so it's, they're kind of crescent shaped short rows that um, the back, all of the back panel is included in them. And then you're sort of working farther and farther out onto the front panels every time. So it, it's a big long section, but it's looking so good. I do like the pattern. I think the pattern is really thorough. There are times when it's almost too thorough. Um, some of the sections, there are notes at the beginning that kind of confused me. <laughs> I think it's something was lost in translation. So. The sections are very clear. Um, there's a lot of information in all of it. 
all of the instructions are written out fully for all of the short rows. It's not just like do this kind of short row 20 times. It's like 20 rows written out very clearly each row what it should be. But what confused me was at the beginning of that section, there was a note that was not clearly written. And that's the bit that I thought was lost in translation. And it turns out all the information that was in the note was not entirely necessary because it was written out in each row. But I think the note was kind of just like, heads up, this part is maybe not the most intuitive part, but it's, you know, this is why we did it. But it, it, the wording wasn't really clear. And it, I read it like 10 times and I was like, I have no idea what this means. And then ultimately, after I got into the short rows, I was like, okay, now I understand what it means. But I kind of didn't even need to read the note because it's already built into the pattern. Regardless, I do think it's a really fun pattern so far. I'm very excited to work on this. Um, <laughs> starting to think maybe it was a bad idea to cast it on at the <laughs> beginning of December because I do have to focus more on my Christmas knits before then. But like I said, those are not going to be so time consuming that they're all I work on in December anyway. So I think it's fine. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a little different for me and for Vlogmas because I'm traveling for work tomorrow. I have a, a one night overnight trip for work. So I'm going to be driving in the day more than I'm used to. And then after work, I will just be in a hotel by myself all evening. So I guess we're going to have a cozy little shut in tomorrow to get some stuff done anyway. So maybe I'll force myself to bring a couple of Christmas whips so that I have to work on a gift knit tomorrow. Something that I completely forgot to introduce this morning when I was discussing my advents is this cute little calendar that I got. Now this is just a drop ship calendar. These are mass produced. It's a very simple concept. It was very inexpensive and that's why I ended up with it. Um, it definitely came direct from China, but I'm not upset. I think it's a cute concept. I was just looking for an inexpensive, um, not time consuming little Christmas craft to do every day. So what this says, it's an advent calendar in a matchbox. It's not a real matchbox, but they styled it. So it looks like it has the strike strips on the side, which I think is cute. And it's for cross stitch, which I've never done. I've done some embroidery, but this is like super beginner stuff. So I think it's going to be fine. So what it is, there's the little kit when it's open. This sheet is the instructions for every day. And I think I might cut these up because it's going to get confusing. And it comes with one little <laughs> wooden embroidery hoop. There's a packet here of the floss you need. There's this tiny sheet of instructions. <laughs> this is it. And then a whole stack of presumably 24 pre-cut in a couple different colors of the sheets you need to embroider. I don't know what they're called. That sort of stiff woven fabric that cross stitch is done on. So I don't know if it comes with a needle. Oh yeah, there's a needle in with the, there's a couple needles in with the embroidery hoop. So everything you need is technically here. So this is a nice little portable one that I can take with me when I'm on my little work trip. I do have another work trip later in the month or when I'm you know, staying at family. So every day has a different motif. And I don't know what I'll do with these when they're done, but I could make them into ornaments or I could make them into like a countdown to Christmas wall calendar or something like that. So you can see the number for the day on each side. And then there's a corresponding tiny little cross stitch motif on the back. And I'm so pleased, I'm so excited at the prospect of getting to work on these. So that's why I'm gonna cut them out because it's not super intuitive. There's not numbers on this side and I think I'll get confused, but if I just cut them up like this, I, they'll be like little cards. And then throughout the month, I'm gonna work on my cross stitch skills, I'll figure out how it's done. And then I'll have all of these cute little cross stitch motifs as Christmas decorations in the future. So. I think this was a cute little activity and I'll work on that now while my husband is preparing some dinner. Let's see how long this takes me. What if I said that this is like such a cute, sweet little activity and then cross stitch is actually way more time consuming than I expected it to be. And this is not realistic. That would be totally like me. I'm not going to lie. All right. I'm going to set this back here. I'm going to go get some scissors so that we can cut out those little cards and get it all situated. And then we can try some cross stitch.
Okay, some of these are questionable. Like this one is just like stripes. Most of them aren't Christmassy. There was one, where is it? This is, this is just a sailboat. I, I have a feeling once we get into the month, as I get closer to these things that I don't think are particularly Christmassy motifs, maybe I will sub them out for one of the ones we've already done and maybe it like a different color. Like, if, is there like an ornament or something? Or like this motif would be fun to do in a couple different colors instead of doing a sailboat. <laughs> I'm sure there are 24 Christmas things. I'm not, I don't think they needed to go with sailboat. So I've spent most of my day watching vlogs on YouTube. I really love watching them, which is why I make them, because I think it's so fun to get to feel a little more about your favorite creators and follow along through the month. And it does kind of cultivate this really cozy routine during December. So I am going to link some of the vlogmases that I'm watching. It's day one and there are so many and there are a couple accounts that were unexpected to me, just channels that I subscribed to that haven't done vlogmas before. So I was super excited to see that they uploaded. So among those are Retro Claude, who I hadn't seen do one before, and um, Megs from Megs and Co Yarn uploaded one. So I'm really excited to see what everybody has in store. So I'm going to link below all of the vlogmases that I was watching today so that if you're interested, you can watch along and we'll have some context. And I just I think it's so fun and want to uplift other creators because it's my favorite part of the, the whole season. So I'm going to settle in and see how I like the cross stitching, kind of get a taste for how that's going to go this season. And then I will probably end the video and start editing so that I can upload and have it up for you today on December 1st. I'm not certain that I will actually edit and upload a video every day this month. I think that's really ambitious and possibly uh, unrealistic for me because I do work full time. I uh, edit my own videos. I do everything on my own, but I'm going to try. I'm gonna, I know last year I tended to do two or three day vlogs in chunks. As much as I can this, this year, I am going to do singular day videos, but sometimes probably over the weekend when we have guests or something like that, they're going to be lumped together into one video for today. I'm so glad that you could join me. I hope to see you back for the rest of Vlogmas. Hit subscribe so you don't forget to watch the rest of the month because there are so many fun Vlogmases to keep up with. And I'm so glad that you chose to spend your time here with us today. Enjoy some cozy cross stitch footage as we close out the evening. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye. It doesn't come with these colors. But they're okay. Hmm. I have embroidery floss. I'm gonna go dig in my stash and find some that's that brown. Okay, here we go. Found this one in stash. It's gonna go well. <laughs> 